In this video, I'd like to demonstrate using National Instrument Multisim to simulate a circuit with two resistors and to measure the voltage across and current through uh, one of the resistors, uh, one of the two resistors. All right, so I'm going to go to my start menu and start typing Multisim. And there it is on my system, NI Multisim 14.2. You can also scan the menu, and for me, it's under NI Multisim. There it is. Let me don't need it quite so big. Okay. And so I want just a simple circuit with basically a battery or a DC voltage source. Um, the circuits want a ground sort of to establish a clear zero for voltage. Um, the resistors for the current to go through, and then a voltmeter and ammeter to, to do some measuring. So here we go. I'm going to start under sources over here, place source. I'm going to click on that. And I want uh, there's a big long list, but I'm going to shorten the list by saying power supply and DC power supply. And this is what I'm often going to refer to as a battery. Um, I'll make the circuit and then I'll do any adjusting I want in voltages and in the same sort of relative location as the ground. So I will grab the ground wall in here. And um, in this version, it just sort of keeps popping up. So I am done with sources. And so I can either close the sources and open something else or I can switch. So let me close and say I want to open basic. So that's one approach I could take. Or if I had sources open, I can change sources over to basic in this drop down here. So either keep what's open and, and use this drop down to switch what group you're in, or you could close it and open the next group you want either way. This has a lot of things in it, but what we want here are just resistors. This sort of comes uh, with the sort of pre selected choice is uh, 1K, 1 kilo ohm. Um, and I'm just going to grab two larger ones. So I will often give you what particular resistance I want, but here in this demo, I'm just grabbing uh, some random resistors. So I'm going to grab uh, this uh, 232.32 kilo ohm and maybe a 4.32. And so then that is my basic circuit. I'm going to have these two resistors. I'm going to have them in series. And then I want to measure the voltage across and current through uh, one of the resistors. OK. So let me get out under here, place indicator. Uh, I want a voltmeter. And there's the H is for horizontal and the V is for vertical. I want to put, uh, I want to make my voltmeter in parallel with R2. So I want it horizontal. And I want, when I'm traveling around from this, uh, I'm going to go around the circuit and I'm going to go from the long end to the short end. And I want to see this plus before the minus. So the R stands for reversed. So if I were going to, if I were going to go through it uh, from from right to left, I would I might want this one. If I'm going to if I'm going to proceed from left to right, then I want the H without the R. And if you get it wrong, all you're going to see is like a negative voltage, which is not a big deal. If you happen to, you know, at least for me, if you connect it wrong, but it's just the negative of what you uh, wanted, then just sort of realize that and, and, and fix it in your results. So there is my voltmeter. I'm going to have it parallel. Now parallel is a, about how you connect it, but it will also be convenient for it to be sort of physically parallel or sort of parallel lines with the resistor. But that doesn't mean anything until I connect it. Real in electronics, 
being in parallel is about connecting. And then I want an and meter. I'm going to have the and meter. I'm going to sort of have the circuit go R1, R2, and then sort of like turn a corner and start coming down. So I'm going to go with a vertical voltmeter. And again, in this path around from the long end of the battery to the short end of the battery, I want it to hit the positive before the negative to give me a positive result in the meter. So I want the vertical without the R. I'm going to put that in here. Okay. So I'm going to start from the 12 when I get close to this edge, I get a little like a blob there on the end and then I can drag and I'm dragging over to R1. And when I saw a blob, I'm going to take that out again and do it a little slower. When I get a blob, I can start to drag. And then when I get to, a, I see a blob at the R1, I can uh, get a blob again and I can let go. I can click, sorry, not just let go, but click. And then I click down and drag and then click again. Click, drag, click again. Click, drag, and I'm gonna click here just to make a like a corner and then come up. Okay. And then I can drag over. And it doesn't depend if it, if they're not nice straight lines, it really doesn't matter. It matters what's connected. Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's, it's easier to, to, to see what's going on if it's neat looking, but it doesn't, doesn't affect the way it works. Okay. So here is my main circuit, my main loop. I'm gonna, the charges will come out of the top of the battery. They will go through R1, they will go through R2, therefore R1 and R2 are said to be in series, but you have to go through one and then the other, and they're in series with this ammeter. And then, and then they sort of finish up and come into the other side of the battery. So that is my main circuit. I can grab some stuff, highlight some stuff, and I'm hitting the arrow keys to move it all down, give myself a little more room. I'm gonna move this, uh, voltmeter, which is not attached, I'm going to move it up a little bit. Just they were overlapping a little bit too much for me. Um, the circuit often wants, uh, sometimes it won't work without, and but it's always convenient to have a ground. So I'm going to move the uh, ground connected ground wire so to the low end of the battery. This just said the battery establishes that one side's 12 volts higher than the other one, but the ground says this is zero volts. So it's not just that this is 12 volts higher than it was on the other side, but it's 12 volts higher than zero. So we know that it's precisely 12, and that helps the system in the simulation. And then I want uh, voltmeters are connected, and meters are connected in series. So that's why. Um, in series means the thing that the elements see the same current. And so the current comes out of the battery and goes through the resistor R1, goes through the resistor R2, goes through the ammeter. So the ammeter reads the current seen by these two resistors and comes back to the battery. Now we're going to connect the, the voltmeter in parallel. You should not get too, you want to be sort of on, on a wire when you make this connection. You don't want to be too close to the resistor, the, the edge of the resistor, because it might disconnect the other wire. So make sure, um, again, that you're not, that you're, you know, you want to make a connection sort of to a wire. So it makes this node in the wire rather than, um, getting too close to the device because that might disconnect them. And then finish making these in parallel. So now this is connected in parallel. If there's a wire on one side, a wire connection on one side of the voltmeter and the resistor in this case, and a wire connection on the other side, that wire could go on and be connected to other things. It almost certainly will, but the important thing about being in parallel is this wire on the one side and the wire on the other side. And that means they see the same voltage. So 
whatever energy gets used up, um, whatever voltage is, uh, the R2 sees, the, the voltmeter sees the same voltage. And the idea is now that there's some current going through R1 and just the teeniest, tiniest little bit that would have gone through R2 gets peeled off. And so little that it doesn't matter. That's our, like, our, ideally what would happen with a meter. So that R1 and R2 will still see almost the same current. Um, a little teeny little bit peels off, and that teeny little bit we can use to measure the voltage. And then those currents recombine the bulk of the current in this teeny little bit, and then they proceed through the end meter, and the current is measured there. So we're measuring the volt. The voltage construct across. So I often talk about across, a voltage across, and a current through. Those are my sort of prepositions. And in terms of circuits, voltmeters go in parallel, and meters go in series. I could put the ammeter in here. And again, ideally, it wouldn't make a big difference whether we're seeing the current through just R2 or through R2 and the voltmeter, because the voltmeter has so little current through it that it hardly matters. Okay. And so now, if I want to change the uh, property of anything, let's say I wanted to make this one volt, I can right click and choose its properties. And then over here in the value, change it to uh, one. Um, I can do that up here as well. I can choose the properties and change this um, resistance. And here we see the separation of the unit. Um, here's the K for kilo and the ohm. So it's a resistor, so it has to come in ohms. Um, the K is important, it corresponds to a thousand. But you can, in editing, you can get rid of the K, and that's something to be careful about. If you're, you're making some circuit, uh, some specific circuit circuit that you have to make, that uh, makes a big difference whether you have or don't have the K. So I want the K, so I'm going to keep it. But I could type, I could type a different number here if I want, and I can also do a replace. So I could replace and get a a new uh, resistor that way, or I could just type in a new value. Let me pick the same value. I just wanted to show you that there, I can change a value or I can do a replace. So sometimes if I have the wrong element, I can uh, replace it and without sort of, sort of taking apart my whole circuit. Um, so that's a useful thing. Um, another useful thing while I'm blathering on about useful things is you can uh, right click on the wire and change its color. And that can be useful to see are things connected the way you should. So I could often make, since this wire was connected to the ground, um, I will often make it black or I will make it green, green for ground or black is a common color for something that is, um, at zero volts is grounded. So I'll choose that. And then it colors not just that segment. I chose a uh, net color. And it made this wire that went up to the battery black. It went made this continuation of the wire that goes up to the ammeter. It made it black. And so it said all these things are at the same voltage. So there is a voltage level in this circuit associated with this wire, it happens to be zero, but it connected everything that it knew would be at the same um, same voltage level. And that can be useful as a sort of, as a form of debugging. Sometimes the, the circuit uh, gets uh, a little bit crazy. Sometimes it looks fine, but something's not connected that should be, or sometimes, uh, sometimes there, there might be a wire mysteriously going behind the ammeter instead of connecting to the ammeter. And then like maybe too much will turn black or not enough will turn black. And that would, like if this dot here 
weren't really connected to this wire going up, then this would turn black and this one, and that would be a clue that uh, you were missing a connection. If this wire went behind the ammeter rather than connecting to the ammeter, um, then more would turn black than you wanted to. So it's so it's a, a debugging form. So these wires should all to test that they're all connected. I could come in here and change its color, so I will um, to I don't know maybe an orange, and all that should change. So just it's just a test of a uh, connection. Okay, so right now I have a battery or DC voltage supply of one volt. I have my two resistors in series. I have my ammeter. I have my voltmeter. I'm going to turn the circuit on. And then I get a volt reading. So I'm expecting some of the voltage in R1 and some of it in R2 to be used up. I expect more of it to be used up in the bigger resistance. So of this one volt, more of it, more than half of it is used up here. The rest of it should be here. And then here is the current. And so the voltages of this through R2, or sorry, the voltage across R2 is 0.651. And the current running through is 0.151 milliamp. And then if I want to change the voltage, well, let me um, let me get uh, do a calculation of voltage over current. So let me bring up a calculator. Here's my calculator. Um, let me put myself in scientific mode for fun. Okay, and. Uh, resistance in by Ohm's law and a resistor is ohmic, I can divide the voltage by the current. Well, I can always divide the voltage by the current and get a resistance, but uh, so let's do that. And then ohmic will mean that if I change the voltage, uh, the current will adjust, but it uh, the resistance won't change. So let's take our 0.651 in voltage and divide that by 0.151 milliamps, and there is 4.31, and that makes sense. And the resistance is 4.31, and it was a resistor of 4.32 kilo ohms, so that makes sense. We divided volts by milliamps. A volt divided by an amp is an ohm, but a volt divided by a milliamp, milli is a thousandth something small in the denominator. So if you divide by a small denominator, you expect to get something big. So you expect to get, instead of, if you divide by thousandths, you get thousands. And so that is the kilo. So this resistance would be kilo. And now, and so that's consistent. But now let's change the voltage and see what happens. So I'm going to, I have the circuit off. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to change this voltage now to two. And okay. And now here's the thing to watch is I changed the voltage, but I haven't rerun the circuit yet. So these numbers are not for this voltage. So I could take a picture of this and it looks, it would look crazy. You, you know, you will, occasionally I have, taking a picture of a circuit that I haven't rerun. Um, so occasionally the circuits don't make, you know, you'll see a circuit and you'll try to run it for the values that you see in my circuit and they don't work because I, I sort of screen captured it at the wrong time. Sometimes it's just a mistake on my part. I'm not being careful. And sometimes I do it on purpose to make you rerun the circuit and make sense of it. And sort of, it's sort of me like, not giving away the answer to sort of like make you do it for yourself. Okay, so let's run it now and get the new voltage reading. And so the voltage changed and the current changed. And, and we can find the resistance. Let's divide the voltage 1.301 and divide that by. 0.301 for the current and get 4.322.
So it's, it's not exactly the same, but it's consistent in the same ballpark. And so we are changing, we double the voltage and the resistance stayed the same to like the second decimal place or something. So that seems um, third place of precision or second decimal place. So that makes uh, sense. Let me turn the simulation on. Okay. And I think that's all I really wanted to show you in this demo of make a simple circuit, resistors in series, have the N meter in series in also in series with the two resistors, the voltmeter in parallel, know how to uh, connect the ground, be able to change the battery and do the calculation of voltage over uh, current and see that that's consistent with this resistance and then it doesn't change so that the this resistance is a constant so that the device is ohmic. That's what I wanted to show you. Thanks so much for your attention.